Pleased to be in the company of Ariel Hawani on a big week heading towards a big weekend for ESPN. In Brooklyn, UFC makes its debut here with us. And it's a big one. We have Henry Cejudo, who is the flyweight champion against the bantamweight champion, TJ Dillashaw. Now, they're fighting for uh, Cejudo's belt. Yes. A a and it, it was supposed to be the headliner next week, but they, they move it to this week. Yes. Why is this such a gigantic opportunity for Cejudo? It's a massive opportunity. I would argue it's one of the most important fights in UFC history. Why is that? And here's why. Henry Cejudo and his team believe that if they lose on Saturday night, the UFC is going to get rid of the flyweight division. So all the fighters contracted to the UFC to fight at 125 pounds will be out of a job. They truly believe this. Now, they believe if they win, it survives. Think of those stakes. That's unbelievable. This has never happened before. Now, Dana White and the UFC aren't coming out and telling the world this, but they have had fighters come up to them and say, I need you to win on Saturday to save my job. So it's like 300 or Braveheart. Yes. You're fighting for the tribe. You're this fighting for all of your, all of the, your weight class? Yes, what, yes. Do you think that that happens? I do believe so, because wow. I think that Henry Cejudo is a very marketable fighter. The problem with the flyweight division in the past, it was ruled by a guy named Demetrius Johnson, who was supremely talented. However, he didn't really go out of his way to market himself and the division. Cejudo is that guy. He's an Olympic gold medalist. He speaks three languages, good looking. He's great with the media. If they can get behind him, mm -hmm. he wins this fight. There's a future. There are those that would say that TJ Dillashaw at 135 is the best pound for pound fighter in the, in the sport. You say no, why? Not quite yet, he hasn't done enough. He's on his way. Mm -hmm. If he beats Cejudo, that's a massive feather in his cap. But as of right now, I would lean towards the likes of Daniel Cormier, George St. Pierre, John Jones. They've done a little more at this point of their careers. A name that the casual observer to the sport, or even those that don't follow the sport, would know certainly Greg Hardy, a yes. former uh, All-Pro NFL player whose career is de derailed by a domestic violence case. But this is a UFC debut. Yeah. What are your level of expectations for him? Not very high. Uh, the UFC wants him to win. There's no doubt about that. He is not a UFC caliber fighter. I don't believe if the UFC wasn't making its debut on ESPN Saturday, that he'd be even in the UFC. Mm -hmm. They're expediting his process, so to speak. He's 3-0 and as a professional. He hasn't fought anyone who is very talented at all. They want him to be a star, so they're going to give him favorable matchups, if you will. They want a knockout, but right now, I wouldn't consider him creme de la creme at heavyweight. Understood. The card's the card, but just to have this sport in Brooklyn on this network, for you, I mean, like, what, what could be bigger than this? Surreal is the word that comes to mind because as longtime fans of the sport, we have dreamed of the UFC coming to ESPN. And I'm not just saying this because I work for ESPN, but we have always felt like our sport doesn't get the respect that it deserves. This is validation. This is a graduation. This is part of the evolution. This is a massive deal for the sport, and everyone recognizes it. Well, and you help to a huge degree because you, you make, for, for people like me whose plate is filled with all the things I grew up with, you make it understandable, consumable, and whatever else. So continue to do Thank all you. you're doing. It's a pleasure to be face-to-face. It's to an face honor. With you. Thank you so much. Ariel Hawani. For more, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus.